Hey everybody, it's Josh at Walnut Ridge. Last few weeks we've talked a lot about winterizing and uh, how we've been running a special to uh, no appointment necessary to get a winterize. And then I've mentioned it if you have some questions or comments, um, we'd be glad to answer those. And also the uh, reference to video we used to have uh, to show you how to do it. So we're gonna make a new video today uh, and I'll walk you through. I'll actually do the winterize myself so you see how to do it. We're gonna do it on this passport today. There's so a few things that you need to make sure you do um, when you start to winterize. First off, your holding tanks, you got to make sure you get those emptied out. So if you have somebody that comes and pumps it out or if you can get to a dump station, get that drained. Uh, the fresh tank on this is on the other side. It's just a cap. Uh, so you need to know where your fresh tank drain is. Make sure you drain out your fresh tank. We're not going to use the tank. We're actually going to use the pump um, with the antifreeze bottles. And some trailers are going to be different than what this one is. So we picked a... a just kind of a basic, uh, this one doesn't have anything fancy, there's no washer, dryer, anything like that. So you have to remember if you have those extra things like an ice maker on your fridge or the washer dryer hookup that you do have to winterize those as well. So, but we'll start with this passport. We've got everything drained on this. So now we're going to start with how, the process that we do the winterizing. The first thing we're gonna have to do is drain the water heater out. Um, this one is an Atwood. So it actually has a drain plug down here that's just a seven eighths uh, socket that fits on that. Uh, if you have a suburban water heater, it's going to have uh, the drain in the center. It's got an anode rod, which we've talked about in our learning center events. And that's an inch and sixteenth socket. Before you take that plug out of there, you'll want to pull up on this uh, pressure relief valve here and just let the pressure off of the water heater, that water that's in it. Otherwise, when you take that plug out, that water's going to kind of shoot out of there and then uh, might end up getting you soaking wet. Makes for a miserable... Uh, experience when you do the rest of the winterize. So I've got the pressure down on this. Close that back before you take it out because if you leave that open and let the air push it out, it, again, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to be like a water cannon coming at you. So right here, we're just going to take this plug out. And this one's just a plastic plug or a nylon plug. Um, so once we get that loose, Take this out, you see that starts draining. Let's set the plug over here to the side. If you wanna drain it faster, you can lift up on this, but I wanna show you real quick if I lift on this, how much faster that starts going. So you create that pressure, so if you were if you were draining this and didn't relieve that pressure and you took that plug out, you can see what I'm talking about. It's gonna, that water's gonna spray out. So we'll let that go for a minute because we don't need to stand here and wait on it. We'll go inside and get started on the rest of this. Okay. This one normally has a couch sitting right here, um, but I wanted to show you, give you a full access or full view of the water heater on the back of it. Um, so we took the couch out, but you can see the factory has cut an access right here so that you can get down to the water heater. Um, but we've went ahead and taken that off so that you can see the back. And if you can see down here, there's this one valve right down here. This is the bypass for this water heater. That valve only turns a quarter of a turn. So we turned up like that. Now the, the cold water, instead of going through and into the water heater, is now gonna go up this bypass. And then there's a check valve here, so it won't allow it to go in the water heater and goes right back out the hot lines. So now we're we're not putting antifreeze in the water heater. We're just gonna drain it, leave it, leave it drained for the winter. Um, and actually I would suggest leaving the drain plug out uh, so that the air can be in there so any residual water doesn't freeze or cause any problems. So we have the water heater bypassed. Your water heater um, may have different types of valves. Sometimes they do two valves here instead of the check valve. So you may have to turn both of these valves. Sometimes there's three. There'll be one in the middle, one up here, one down here, and they're just stop valves. So you would, you would have to close off uh, or open these two and open this one. That way you wouldn't allow it to go through here. I'm sorry, close the top and bottom, open the middle so it bypass. You just have to look and see what you have on your system. A lot of the trailers, especially the bigger fifth wheels, um, even probably starting with Cougars and going up, they might just have a valve on the outside in your, uh, in your water hookup station that you just have to turn one valve that says water heater bypass. So, but this one you gotta actually get to the back of the water heater. So now we have that set to bypass and we're ready to go with hooking our antifreeze up. Another thing you have to know, you have to know where your water pump is. So on this one, we have to hook a hose directly to the water pump to be able to draw out of our uh, antifreeze jugs. Actually, I'm gonna grab this light so that way we can light up this area over here whenever I start to do that. Uh, let's see. 
think that's going to be good. Can you see that if I have it like this right here? Okay, so here's the water pump on, on this particular unit. This one right here that's going down um, right here is, is going to be the uh, outlet side of of the the water so the going feeding the rest of the water system actually no i'm wrong yeah okay sorry this is the inlet side that's what i'm looking for anyway this is one going down to the tank this other side right here you can see ties into the rest of the system which this one runs up to the city water um this is the side we're gonna we're gonna take off uh, cause we want the draw side of the pump. So take this off in the pump instead of pulling from this hose in your fresh tank, we're now going to stick another hose that we've made and your unit may come with a bypass already built on that has a hose coiled up inside there. You can just take out and use, but we're going to take this off, put our hose that we fabricated on, and then we're going to draw directly out of these uh, jugs of antifreeze. So this particular model, you just pull out on that blue uh, tab and then this is just going to pull straight out. Um, and be out of your way. So it'll be a little easier to hook up for us. We'll put our hose that we made in and then pop that blue tab back in so that that's, that's locked in there. Now the pump is ready to draw from this hose that we've created. You can kind of get back a little bit now if you want because we won't be right in there on it. So we have our jugs of antifreeze ready. Typically it takes about two jugs. We won't even probably use all of this. I will end up using it all because it's it's okay to pour it in the traps and stuff when we get done. I'll show you that, but um, better safe than sorry. There's no reason in conserving this, um, you know, little bit that we'll have left till next year. So we just open up our antifreeze jugs here. And so our tube that we made, we're just going to stick this right down into it. I probably should add paper towels ready. We'll get some of those, clean up our mess. It's be a good thing to have handy. So. On this unit, now we got to find where the water pump switch is. Turn on the water pump. Probably. Yep. Somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Where's the water pump switch? Here we go, behind the door here, we got customer's bedding stuff. So right over here, um, this is the switch for the water pump right here. I'm gonna turn this on in a second, the red light will come on, I'll show you, <clears throat> it's just gonna build pressure. If you've ever used your water pump, you know what it sounds like. Um, but I want you to see what it does on the, the jug of antifreeze over here, so. Turn this on, you can see it starts drawing out of the antifreeze. Might take it a second to, to get this drawn up to the pump. Sometimes you gotta kinda help it along there. If you can't get this to draw, we can also go ahead and start opening faucets. Uh, create a little air break to, to pull that through. So I'll just open up one real quick and you'll be able to see. That pump will kick in. And there you go, it starts drawing in and reach down. that build pressure now i'll show you what we do now we're we have antifreeze pumping from the jug into the system the pump's primed and ready to go now we're just going to go through to each faucet and we're going to open and close the cold and the hot until we get that pink antifreeze flowing through we've already bypassed our water heater so we don't have to worry about it going through there so i'll start right here in the kitchen all we're going to do is turn this valve on we're going to run this through so you start seeing the pink come out of there right about now. There you go. Now we have antifreeze through the cold side. We'll turn that off and we'll go ahead and do the hot side. You'll see pink at first because it's pushing out what's left and it's going to be clear water again. And then once that hot line, uh, antifreeze has sped through the hot line and got back up here, you can see we're pink again now. So now we've done both sides. So don't let it fool you when you first turn it on. It may, it may be pink for a second and it's going to turn clear again. So Make sure we got plenty ran through there. We'll turn those off. We do have them in the traps. I typically like to do both sides, um, but we're gonna have some leftover. I'll pour down. The, the P-traps are, are connected together underneath anyway, so they are. it is gonna hit both sides um, if you don't move it, but it's just a, a 
a reassurance thing for myself, I guess, to do both sides. So we got the same thing in the bathroom. Uh, I'll start with the shower because it's kind of here in the back. So we're going to turn on the faucet. What I would do is run it through the shower head. So you have two options. You can either you can either run it through this way, and then you'll see the pink come out here in a second on the cold side. There we go. And we're getting close on our first jug of antifreeze that we may have to, I'm gonna have to go adjust this hose to make sure we stay down in it. Probably got enough to get the hot side drawn up here. So we'll go ahead and turn the hot side on. I like to run it through the hose. If you don't wanna run it through this hose, you can just disconnect it off of the faucet um, and just just let it drain out just make sure you drain the water out and then leave it hanging don't hook it back up so you can see we got the pink in there now turn that off i have ran out of antifreeze in that jug i need to go switch it over okay you also want to make sure you have just a little bit in the actual faucet up here so we, we run that now we'll go ahead and do the sink cold side's not going to take as long in here now because we've already ran it into this room so you can see we've got it go ahead and do the hot side still shouldn't take as long either already got it there make sure you run enough in to fill up the p-trap and then that's going to be done with that and then you can't forget your toilet this is a big one we replaced a lot of valves um, on toilets this one's a foot flush so we're just going to run this antifreeze see the pink coming in there now okay we know we have plenty of antifreeze in the valve leave that sitting in the bottom of the toilet so it doesn't crack the the bowl at the bottom where normally water would be sitting uh this particular unit does have an outside shower so we are going to have to make sure that we hit the utility shower the keys. Let's see, 751. Yeah, we got some grinding going on over here. Okay, same thing. We just got an outside shower. I think this one's. There we go. We got that turned on. It's tied into the bathroom, so it's not going to take long to get the pink in it. We'll go ahead and run that through. You can see it kind of there we go now we've got the hot push through so now that's done one other thing and this is an important one that uh, that people sometimes forget it gets a little tricky so I'm going to give you some tips here on how not to get yourself soaking wet or how not to break your city water connection because that's what we're gonna that's the last thing we have left on this one Got the hose in the way. There we go. Okay, so we need to do our city water connection. It's on the other side of the unit. And the city water has a check valve built into it. So it's a spring loaded little valve that we need to push in and allow that antifreeze to come back out. Uh, but right now it's under pressure because the water pump. So if you try and push it in, it's going to be real stiff. And if you, if you force it in, then there's a little rubber seal in the back of there that it might blow that seal out. And then the next time you go to use your camper, if you have to use a water pump, um, if you're, you're dry camping somewhere and you're using your tank, then that seal's not gonna be in there and, and all the water's just gonna push out your city water. So what we need to do, we'll go in here. We turn our water pump off. If you have a second person to help you, it makes it easier. Um, so we want the pump off. We're gonna open a faucet, let the pressure out of the system. Um, without the pump running so we're just going to relieve that pressure off same thing we did with the water here before we took the drain out now we'll go outside to the city water connection and this particular unit is right here we're going to pop this little screen uh, hose washer out of here and the, the valve is that we're going to push is, is inside of there it's probably difficult to see there's a little white check valve and you'll want to move your camera back a little before I push this just in case. Um, and you don't want to stand right in front of it, but see it's easy to push in. You get just a little bit of water coming out of there now. So now what the, the issue is, is 
I need that pump turned back on so that I can force the antifreeze out. And so this is where if you have a second person to be handy because you could hold this, they could turn the pump on until the antifreeze starts coming out. You let off this uh, and then it'll build pressure back up. So here's a tip that you can do. So now I have a second person except for uh, uh, Ashley on the camera. We can stick this hose washer in backwards where we got this concave screen. Push that in there and that's holding my valve in right now. I'm going to go hit the pump inside. You stay here and watch. This is going to start sending antifreeze back out. I'll be able to see it and know that it got through, but I'm going to go hit that and show you what it's going to do. You should have seen that water coming out of there. Yeah, see, we got antifreeze all over the place. And it wouldn't take very much because that connection, whenever we were hooking up to the pump, you could see was right there uh, by everything. So it didn't have to go very far in. So then what you want to do though is make sure you take your, your washer back out of there and don't leave that valve pressed in. Now we can just put it back in the correct way. Put that cap on there. And that's pretty much it on winterizing on this. We have a couple things to clean up. We'll take our pump connection back loose and, and hook it back to where it goes. And then what I like to do, take this hose out of the antifreeze so it's not drawn anymore. Water pump, we'll turn it on. We'll go ahead and open the valve on the sink. Got to clean our hose out so we're not making a mess whenever we take it off of there. We can shut that off. Now our pump's hose is mostly empty. I'll probably hit that again one more time. Don't want to send antifreeze all over the fall. That's alright. That's fine. You can, you can leave it off there. Okay, so now you can see we have a little bit of antifreeze left in our jugs. I would just take pour them right down so that they'll get in the drains. Throw those away in a minute. The shower we're sitting on level, so you can see a lot of it came down here. So I'm not 100% confident that enough of the antifreeze got down to the drain. So I would take and pour that directly into it. So we know that the P trap's getting some. Go ahead and pour a little bit into there. And it doesn't hurt for it to sit in the toilet just a little bit to help protect the where that sill is and inside of there. So that's it on winterizing. Now we just clean our mess up and uh, pack it up for the winter don't forget take your battery off and store it in a in a, uh, a warm dry place over the winter or you have to keep it charged uh, if you're not going to do that and check your water levels but other than that questions or comments uh, put them on the video be glad to answer them and we'll see you next time